drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. A very common question that I am asked very often is how to turn around an all grain beer faster without compromise to the end beer in terms of quality and flavour. Often this is for very good reason like a party or wedding that is coming up very soon. I actually have a lot of tips around this that make a short answer impossible. So here is a full guide video from start to finish of the whole process from grain to glass. Firstly, choose the right recipe. Some styles are better than others served early. IPA styles are often preferable to be drunk fresh, so these are perfect. Some also enjoy Pale Owls and American Blondes early too. Lower ABV wheat beers and stouts are also great examples of beer styles that can be enjoyed early in their life. There is also British Session Owls like Miles and Bitters, so quite a nice selection of great styles here for you to choose from, with a variety of alcohol levels and actual fat. No doubt as you have seen I have many recipes on my channel that fits this well, for your consideration which go through a development process before I share them to ensure the very best of results. In total there are over a hundred of my own recipes that I have shared to date on YouTube, so plenty to choose from no matter what you are looking for. Your recipe's volume will also play a very large part in the speed of a brew day. Smaller batch brewing will certainly shave a great deal of heating time off of your brew duration and naturally it is faster to transfer less than more when it comes to brew to fermenter and of course fermenter to keg. Whilst we are on this topic I cannot help but mention that the vast majority of my brews are recipe development brews that are done at low volume for taste testing and tweaking leading up to a final recipe. This has always been my approach to both commercial and home brewing and is a process that I very much enjoy and would recommend to any brewer for looking to be progressive. The easy way to get started with this is to brew other people's recipes in small batches first and then decide what to tweak and change. It is unlikely that you will score a 100% win on the first batch no matter how experienced you are, but the feeling of knowing that you have hit the final batch with a good gold standard is certainly very satisfying. If you are looking for direction then I have a large selection of recipe writing videos in the form of guides to all manner of different beer styles already on my channel that have been put to great use by home brewers and commercial brewers too. Another great tip before your actual brew day is to fill the water that you will need for both the brew and the sparge a day before your intended brew. This will mean that the cold water will then increase in temperature by the time you start heating it and you will save on heating time, as well as potentially on electricity of course, depending on your method of room heating. If you have a water supply that allows for clean drinking water via a hot tap then this also may be a great option for you as you will often be able to get fairly close to mash temperature from a home hot tap. So naturally in this second case you would fill right before using this hot water. Let's now look at faster mashing. It is commonplace to mash for just 40 minutes in commercial brewing rather than the home brewer's 60 minute mash time, but this is simply due to a very fine grain crush and equipment used commercially. At home if you are prepared to add in some extra stirring to your mash then this can certainly speed up the time of starch conversion and to be on the safe side you will want to take a refractometer reading to make sure that you are on point. On this basis you can expect to shave off 20 to 30 minutes of time from the standard homebrew one hour mash time, which is of course considerable. I would still suggest that you mash out though as this readies the grain for the sparge and this in itself can save you much time. Skipping the sparge is also something that I would urge against unless you have tasted this before and your taste buds do not notice any flavour difference. Personally mine do, so I stay with the sparge as flavour is not something I am willing to compromise on. Let's now look at time efficiency. After mashing I am keen to make a quick start to cleaning while I await the brewing system heating up to the boil. For me this means washing down the grain basket or malt pipe ready for a chemical clean within the brewing system's main clean later. On top of this I am always using the waiting times during the brew to attend to other tasks like grain disposal and the putting away of items that are no longer needed. In the end this is an effective use of time that shortens the whole process, instead of simply sitting there on Facebook while we await, which I guess we are all guilty of at some times too. Moving on now to a reduced boil time from the 60 to 90 minute timings. Even if you are a semi-regular view of my channel, then it would be impossible to avoid the fact that I am an advocate of the modern 30 minute boil. My main reason to do this is actually due to the improvements I note to both malt and hop flavour, but the savings for time and also electrical energy simply cannot be ignored either. I have a guide on my channel which explains why the 60 minute and 90 minute boils were commonplace at one time, and why they are of little use to us now when we use modern malt. 
Included in this guide is a section that shows you exactly how to modernise all the recipes that still have a longer boil time. Let's now start moving on to cooling methods. If you are really rushed for time and usually chill your wort, then do consider a no-chill approach which was popularised in countries like Australia due to their high temperature groundwater during the summer season. A common way to do this is to use hot filled bladders as shown on screen now that are more than happy with boiling hot wort being added to them. Each one of these is suitable for up to 20 litres of wort, which is 5.28 US liquid gallons. These are a Keglan product that has a triple layer construction high oxygen barrier that actually make these suitable to keep your wort fresh for at least one year. Naturally, if you're in a hurry, then store these with hot wort in a cold area for next day use. I will also add that these hot filled bladders have been treated to make them completely sterile, and due to the laminating process of the layers, with the addition of nylon, these are also very tough. Due to this, they can be washed out and used again, though due to how cheap they are, many people simply use them once. The choice is yours, of course. The use of heavy duty gloves as shown on screen now are recommended for easier handling of these bags and you'll want to fill them up as far as possible and then squeeze out the remaining oxygen before capping. You will also need to convert your recipe's hop addition timings to suit this method but the benefits will not only save you time on brew day but will also save you money on water and energy. Another great way to save time on the boil and cooling is to skip the boil altogether, which is commonly known as raw brewing. This is a great practice that has great results with much history and is still an active method for many home brewers and some commercial brewers too. There are actually more pros than cons to this and for full details I have a guide to raw brewing on my channel that puts together all the facts for you. You will also find some raw brewing recipes and guides on my channel that have been popular for the time they save while still providing an excellent beer at the end too. Certainly raw brewed beers do very nicely in the flavour department. If you are needing a fast and tasty Christmas beer then I have you covered there too. This raw brew features the method of boiling your hops on your stove while your brewing system is mashing, which is a smart modern technique but you will find some interesting ideas within each of these recipes I believe. For a very fast cooling method I recommend using a quality immersion chiller. A very fine example would be the immersion chillers from Jaded Brewing in the US. I personally use the Scylla which will fit most modern all-in-one systems and unlike regular immersion chillers you can see that the Scylla breaks the water flow into three areas of cooling coils. Each of these three coils is 25 feet long which is 7.62 meters. So this is like having three immersion chillers doing the same job at the same time. Naturally due to this the cost is higher than a standard immersion chiller but frankly due to its lifetime warranty this is really no issue. These cooling holes are neatly formed and this whole design allows for a very effective and efficient water flow and thus cooling. To use any immersion chiller effectively and thus efficiently for speed then it is great to stir the wall with the chiller and if you like you can also recirculate with your pump at the same time for a further speed gain as this allows for the fastest of speeds. However, just stirring like this will bring your wort from boiling point to 85 degrees Celsius in less than one minute. However, I'm also a fan of counterflow chillers which are also very fast and also offer transfer at the same time as cooling. The main issue with them, however, is that because they are cooling one part of your wort at one time, they are little use when it comes to cooling for hops damp temperatures. So as such, if you just want one cooling solution, then the immersion chiller is the way to go. But if you want the best of both worlds like I do, then I suggest the use of both. Let's now look at faster fermentation. For the very fastest of fermentation speeds, then a combination of quake yeast, pressure and high temperature can result in a clean, full attenuating fermentation for even the strongest of warts in 24 hours or less. One such example would be using Vos Quake as shown here at 35 degrees Celsius or more with pressure set to 12 psi or 0.83 bar. There is simply no need or good reason for further pressure than this and this setup almost always results for me in a one day fermentation. Just be sure to use a triple serving of yeast nutrient and all will be very good. If you are looking to use a different type of yeast that is not quake, then once again the use of pressure and higher temperatures will result in faster speeds. Just be mindful that if you want the esters from the yeast, then you should not use pressure for the first three to four days, because this is when the esters are forming flavour and aroma. And finally, let's now look at fast carbonation. 
Personally, I'm an advocate of the method of kegging that involves setting your CO2 regulator to between 10 to 12 psi and leaving it for a week to 10 days. This offers no compromise issues or physical labour. However, if you are in a hurry and are prepared to risk overcarbonation, which could delay you more, then there are various methods that do not involve buying anything further like quick carb devices. Some involve physical labour around shaking the keg or rolling it, but there is one that I believe has better end results in my experience and requires no real effort as such. This method is known as burst carbonating and involves setting your regulator at 40 psi for 24 hours. After this point, dial back your regulator to 20 psi and leave it there until you are happy with the level of carbonation. Usually this will not take long at all and you can then bring it back to 10 to 12 psi for serving. Whilst this method requires a minimum of effort, it is often very effective at fast carbonation. However, it can lead to unpredictable results and part of this is overcarbonation, as with frankly all fast carbonation methods. If you are suffering from overcarbonation, then simply remove the pressure line from your keg and pull the pressure release valve on the keg to release some CO2. Do this every few hours until you are happy with the carbonation level. I do hope that you have found some of these tips helpful. For the benefit of the community, please do share your own faster methods within the comments section of this video, as I am sure that there are more that could be added. I do read every comment and will certainly appreciate your input here, as well as any feedback you have on this video too. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!